Are you wondering how to do a live interview on YouTube or how to add guests into your YouTube live stream? Well, in this video, we're gonna show you the best options to do it. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video. We help you amplify your business and brand with video. If you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links to everything we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. So let's jump into it. Now, if you've tried hosting a live interview on YouTube, then you've probably already realized that the process isn't as simple as it is on other platforms like on Facebook Live. Well, the good news is that adding a guest or multiple guests into your YouTube live stream is possible. And there's now a few options to do it. Some of them are free, some of them are paid. Each of them really has their own strengths and weaknesses. So I definitely suggest sticking around to hear out all of these options to make sure that you're getting the right one for you. So the first option is using Google Hangouts. Now, Google Hangouts is something that's been around for quite a while, and it's had this feature for a really, really long time. It's probably the first tool to easily let you go live on YouTube Live with multiple people in the conversation or in the live stream. You can actually have up to 15 guests on a call, which can be broadcast live. Now, to be able to bring people in, all you need to do is to start a Hangouts call. You can start the call and then send the link around to the people you wanna bring into the call. Once you're ready to go live, all you need to do is press live and you'll be able to broadcast this live to your YouTube channel. Now, while it is probably one of the easiest ways to go live on YouTube with guests in it, it's also probably my least favorite option for doing it. It is limited in quality. It is only 720p, so it's not as high quality as some of the other options, but it's also not that powerful. And you don't really have a lot of control and, and features and things around that to make the stream to look good. And there's also a watermark. A little logo appears in the top corner of your live streams. So none of those are deal breakers, but personally, while you can do it in Hangouts, I think some of the other options that we're about to cover are much better options. Option number two is using Skype and OBS. Now, while this has been something you could do for quite a while, integrating Skype, the video calling and audio calling program with OBS, which is free live broadcasting software, it's been pretty clunky and there's always been hardware issues and, and audio issues and those sorts of things integrating the two. Lots of audio feedback and echo and while you can get it going or could get it going before, it's now much, much easier. Skype now has support for a new feature called NDI, which you can enable in Skype when you enable the content creator mode. And what NDI lets you do is to bring your Skype call, your video calls from Skype into live streaming software like OBS. So if you've got two people on the call, then you're able to bring in each person's video and audio as a separate camera source to be used inside of OBS or other live streaming software. Now we're talking about OBS here because OBS is totally free, Skype is free. This is a good solution. It's not gonna cost you anything now with this new support for Skype and NDI. Now to enable NDI on OBS, you will need to install the NDI plugin. It's a free download. Once you've got that installed, you'll be good to go. And again, all the links to everything we mentioned will be in the description below. So the biggest advantages with doing this besides the cost of nothing is that you're able to get a really high quality feed out of Skype and into OBS and do your live streaming to YouTube or to even other, other platforms as well like Facebook or Twitch using OBS. And you also get full control over what the live stream is going to look like. You can set up different scenes or different camera angles or different views or scenes inside of OBS that you can switch between. So you can really customize what your live stream is going to look like and even set different scenes that you could switch between. So if say I'm talking for a while, you could make me full screen. And then when there's two of us talking, we could probably have 50-50. So they're on half and I'm on the other half and vice versa. When they're speaking, we could make them full screen. So you've got that control to be able to control what the end product looks like and it's really good quality. Another big plus with going with this option is that most people these days have a Skype account already. If not, it's not a big deal to set one up and create one, again, totally free, and then it's easy to integrate with OBS. You're also not limited to just having two people on the conversation. This will work with three, four, five people, but be aware that the more people you bring in, the more load this is gonna have on your computer. So while I've tested it fine, having two and three guests in, I probably wouldn't push it beyond that unless you've got a really powerful system and a really decent internet connection as well. The more people you're having in, the more conversations you're having, the more internet bandwidth you're going to need to be able to not only host the Skype call, but also push it out as a live feed as well. 
You'll also be able to use this method whether you're on Mac or PC as well, as both Skype and OBS have support for both. Now, I think the biggest downside though with using this option of Skype and OBS is the complexity to get everything set up. If you're someone who is not technically minded or you don't wanna spend some time playing around with settings inside of OBS, then this may not be the best option for you. But if you already know OBS, you know how to work it, or you're happy to get up to speed with that, then this will give you a heap amount of control and features, and you're really about to dial in the look of your live stream as well. Option number three is to use Ecamm Live. Now, sorry, PC users and Linux users, Ecamm Live is only for Mac. But if you are on Mac, then this is an amazing solution. This is actually how we do it for a lot of our live streams. It's got direct integration with Skype so that you can open up your Skype call and automatically the Skype call comes through as a feed or a source that you can use inside of Ecamm Live. So the biggest downside of option two, where it was complicated to set up and there was a bit of a learning curve to learn OBS, there's none of that with Ecamm Live because it's so intuitive and so easy and there's not an overwhelming amount of features and settings and things that are gonna take some getting used to or some knowledge around to be able to get them set up right. Ecamm Live is by far the easiest, most intuitive way to do it if you're on a Mac. Now, just like with option number two and using OBS, you're not limited with Ecamm Live to broadcast just to YouTube. You can actually broadcast to Facebook, to Periscope, to Twitch, to a lot of other platforms as well. And they've also got inbuilt integration with Switchboard Live and Restream.io to help you actually share and broadcast your streams to multiple sources. So you could go live to both Facebook and to YouTube simultaneously, all with everything you need inside of Ecamm Live. Another really big feature of Ecamm Live that none of the other options that we're gonna cover here have support for is the integration with YouTube comments, but also Facebook comments as well. Anyone that leaves a comment on your live stream, you can actually feature that comment on screen. You can pick it up, you can move it around. But the whole idea is that this is a deeper level of integration and interaction with your audience while you're live. To be able to click on a comment, feature it on screen, answer that question or talk about that topic and then move on to the next one is a huge feature. Now, while the other solutions up until now have been free solutions, this one isn't a free solution, it is a paid option, but I think at the $79 price point, it's crazy cheap considering what this software is going to let you do. Again, all the links to everything that we're talking about, you can find linked in the description box below. But just remember that this option of using Ecamm Live is only for Mac. So if you are on PC, Linux, or a Chromebook or something else, then maybe option four might be the one that you're after. So option number four is to use Zoom. Now Zoom is an online platform for hosting and running group calls. Now Zoom is another fairly intuitive, really easy to use option for going live on YouTube with multiple people or multiple guests on your stream. Now one of the biggest features or biggest advantages with using Zoom is that you're able to get a lot more people onto your live stream or onto your live call than any of the other options. Some of the plans will let you have 100 people on a call and some of them will let you have 200 people on a call. Now the way that it actually displays the webcam for the people on the call there's only really two options here. There's either the speaker view, which whoever is speaking gets highlighted and gets brought up full screen. And as that changes, then it's automatically adjusted to whoever is speaking. Or there's the gallery view, which is like the picture in picture, the, the Brady Bunch style view, where there's small squares on the screen showing the webcams of whoever is on the call. Now this is limited. You're not able to get all 100 on the screen at once or 200 people. Once you go over a certain amount, it will sort them off into pages of people. So that's something to be aware of if you did really wanna have 100 people on live on your live stream. Um, don't know why you would, but yeah, you can't have them all on there at once. But the moment that they do speak, then they can be brought up full screen on that live stream. The other really big advantage with Zoom is that because it is all hosted and run through their cloud platform, is that you don't really need to have fantastic internet connection because you're not downloading and uploading everyone's calls to, to stream out. It's all managed from their online platform and broadcasted out from that. So at the absolute minimum, if you've got enough upload speed for you to send a high quality picture or high quality video from your webcam to Zoom, then that should be enough for you to be able to have a high quality experience with going live from Zoom with multiple people. So it can really take the pressure off and still allow you to get good results even if your internet connection isn't fantastic. 
and also because it is running through their platform and through the cloud, that there is no real intensive CPU usage either. So it's not gonna put a huge load on your computer. So it doesn't matter if you've got one guest or 100 guests, the load on your computer is going to be the same, which is fairly minimal. The downsides though of using Zoom is that you don't have anywhere near the amount of flexibility or control that you do with the other options that we've mentioned so far. So with option number two and OBS, you could customize what it looked like for your broadcast. Now with Zoom, you don't really get much control. You're really limited to those two views, the gallery view and the speaker view, and that's it. Now you can still do screen shares and those sorts of things, share your computer screen on the live, but there's not much more control or anything else you can configure beyond that point. Now, the other big thing to be aware of with Zoom is that you don't just need to have a Zoom subscription. This isn't a free thing. You will need to have a paid pro subscription, and you'll also need to have the webinar add-on to be able to actually do the live streaming part. But once you've got that added to your account, then it will let you go live to either YouTube or to Facebook. So the minimum to be able to use Zoom to go live to YouTube is $54.99 per month. That's including the base rate of the pro plan plus the additional monthly fee to access the webinar features which have the ability to go live from it. And at that price point of $54.99 per month, you can have up to 100 people joining your live call. So Zoom is option number four. Option number five is using professional live streaming software, very similar to option number two, where we had Skype set up with OBS. This is where we're using Skype with professional level software, Wirecast, vMix, or there's a few others out there as well. Now the biggest benefit with using professional live streaming software like vMix or like Wirecast to bring in guests and live stream to YouTube with multiple people in them is that you'll get the greatest amount of control and flexibility and power and performance as well with your live streams. So essentially it's very similar to option number two where we were using OBS, but Wirecast and vMix have so many more features and so many more tools and a lot more power and performance in behind it to give you much more flexibility and much more control with your live streams. Now both vMix and Wirecast also have their own calling feature, their own guesting feature where you can bring guests in and invite guests into your live stream. But in my experience, it's just as easy if not easier to use the new Skype integration with NDI support and bring in your Skype calls than using the built-in guesting features on vMix or on Wirecast. And really the power and the performance that comes in when you're using Skype's NDI feature and integrating it into vMix or Wirecast is the quality that you're getting through. It's a much higher quality, there's a lot less dropouts. You're using Skype for the call, which again, is much easier to get people set up and running. Most people have a Skype account. There's no need to try and explain to someone how that they need to join your Wirecast call or your vMix call. People these days, they know how to use Skype or they can get up to speed with it really, really quickly. But also once again, that these Skype feeds just come in as another video input, just the same as adding another camera into Wirecast or vMix would. And you get to control and position and set up different scenes or different looks so that you can position this wherever you'd like and change the background and those sorts of things to really customize this up to get a professional looking live stream. Now this option of using Wirecast and vMix is really aimed at the professional end of things because it's gonna come with a much bigger price tag. So with Wirecast, you've got two options. You can get the studio version or the pro version. The Wirecast studio is gonna cost you $695. This will give you two guests using its own built-in calling feature called Rendezvous. Or there's the pro version for 995, which lets you add up to seven remote guests using their own built-in Rendezvous platform and obviously a heap of other features as well. Now, if you're just looking to bring multiple guests in through Skype and you're not going to use the built-in rendezvous feature, then you could probably just get away with the studio version. Now, vMix on the other hand has a heap of different pricing options from a free edition right up to a pro edition or pro license for $1,200. Now the biggest thing to look at when you're selecting which plan is right for you would be the maximum output resolution and the quality that you're gonna be able to broadcast. So I'd say where most people would be sitting would be either the basic HD at $60 US or even the HD plan at $350 US. Now obviously if you're interested in this, you'll have to go through the features and work out which one is right for you. But I'd say most people should be able to get away with either one of those two. And the other thing to be aware of is that because vMix and Wirecast are full production suites, they can actually put your system under a lot more load depending on the computer that you're going to be running them on. And 
vMix is only going to run on Windows, whereas Wirecast will run on Windows or Mac. Okay, so that was a lot of information that we've covered off pretty quick in this video, but those are the five ways to currently go live on YouTube, bringing in a guest or having multiple people on your live stream while you're live. So in summary then, if you just want a really simple way to do it without much control and not necessarily the best quality, then check out Google Hangouts. If you're not an absolute beginner and you're happy to learn software like OBS and to fiddle around and to customize everything up, if that's you, then option number two, using Skype NDI and using OBS could be the best option for you. If you're on a Mac, and you want something that's really feature rich and really powerful, but also really easy and super intuitive to use, then hands down, that's gonna to go to Ecamm Live. If you wanna bring a heap of guests onto your live stream, then Zoom might be the answer for you. And if you're on the more professional end of things and you want full control over everything, you want all the features, all the bells and whistles, then it's gonna to go to vMix or to Wirecast. But personally for me, and I'm someone that actually owns Wirecast and uses it for corporate and professional live streaming, for us, for YouTube and bringing in guests, it hands down goes to Ecamm Live. There is no simpler way, no easier way in my opinion to do it, but still have a heap of good features and a heap of good control over your live stream while you're live. So Ecamm. Well done. Now, if you're interested in recording those online interviews, whether you end up running them live or not, then linked on screen is a video showing you exactly how to do it. And I'll see you soon.